All right, guys, welcome back into another PGA DFS video. This week, we have the Rocket Mortgage Classic. And it's actually going to be the first time that this event has been held at Detroit Country Club. It's actually the first time that this event has been held as well. So in today's video, we're actually going to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown of the new tournaments and kind of how it's going to play out course-wise. We're going to give you guys that course there overview. But first, we're going to give you last week's recap. Then we're going to give you the course overview, uh, the player pool, and then the highlighted plays. We're not going to give you guys core plays because it is going to be a new event and a new course. And so we don't have that much data to draw off of which key stats we should be going off of. Now, I have done the research, have looked at it pretty deeply, and I think that we're going to be able to gauge, gain an edge. 9 to 5 Nation will be able to gain an edge because kind of the course preview that I've been able to do. Um, so that'll be pretty nice. Um, comp course wise, we don't have any course history, so we're going to be looking at comp course instead of course history. Um, pretty much going to be using the club designer, the course designer, Donald Ross. I'm going to be looking at the courses that he has done, comp course wise. We're going to be looking at some other courses as well. Um, we have two courses in you know 2018 and then one in 2017 that we're going to be looking at. Uh, so we will be able to have that as comp course. I'm not going to tell you guys which ones just because I don't want people stealing my <laughs> DFS advice. So that's kind of why I'm going to be doing it that way. Um, but let's get into last week's recap. All right, so last week's recap, we did cash again, which is really nice. Uh, Patreon's got another cash line up there. Cash again, so that's pretty nice. Um, just look, going over the cash build a little bit here. Paul Casey, Bryson Deschambeau, both top 10 finishes. It's pretty nice. Emiliano Grillo, one of the most popular options. He ended up making the cut. Didn't finish out too well, but, you know, it's good staff fit. Made the cut. Did fine. At his price point, you kind of had to play him. Jason Kolkrak was pretty unfortunate just because he struggled putting. He gave up like nine strokes putting, which is pretty unfortunate. He, you know, he's ball striking and driving the ball well, just couldn't putt at all. So maybe even this week he's going to make for a better GPP option. But it's kind of unfortunate that he couldn't make a putt. Would have been a lot better week if he, you know, was able to make the cut. Um, but going a little bit lower, Peter Molinari, you know, he had a pretty good finish there. Uh, top 30 finish is all you can really ask for in a value play. Our other two value plays that we touched on the most were Colin Morikawa, who finished T36. I kind of told you guys to play him over Victor Hovland and uh, Matthew Wolf just because, you know, his price is a little bit lower and he's pretty much the same play, just as good a uh, ball striker as Victor Hovland. It just made sense to play him more um, on draft hands than the other two. And then... We also had Vaughn Taylor. He had a top five finish. Five birdies in a row. It actually really helped out some GPP builds, uh, which is pretty nice to see. Um, that was pretty good. I mean, <laughs> Vaughn Taylor, top five finish for a value play that we liked. We highlighted him in the video last week, so gave you guys that play. And then also we got Kevin Stroman here. Uh, top 15 finish last week, which is pretty nice. Just a solid option. And, you know, he'll be a play that we like again this week. All right, so let's get into the course overview here. So some of the key stats we're going to be looking at are going to be scrambling, birdie or better percentage, strokes gain, total, ball striking, total driving. We're going to be looking at par 5 scoring. We're going to be looking at strokes gain putting. And we're also going to be looking at greens and regulation. Um, those are just going to be some of the stats that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at a few more as well. But we kind of, with this course, it's going to be an interesting one because it's going to be one where you do want to hit the fairway. So we're going to be looking at driving accuracy as well. It is kind of tree line in some of the spots. But it does have four par five finishes or poor five, four par five holes. Um, so we're going to be looking at par five scoring. It's kind of the key stats. Um, it is trying to play longer, but it's not that long. It's about top 50% in length on the tour. Uh, the rough length is about three and a half, apparently. And the greens are going to be playing at 12 and a half, which I do think strokes game putting is going to be kind of a key stat because this is kind of a course where uh, you will have to scramble a little bit. So. People that are not good around the greens are not going to be players that you want to target if they are not good at uh, hitting the green. Um, so some of the players that we're going to be looking at are going to be those Donald Ross specialist players. Some of those guys are going to be Ricky Fowler, Gary Woodland, Hideki Matsuyama, Patrick Reed, Bubba Watson, Billy Horschel, and then Dustin Johnson as well. So that's kind of the course breakdown for you guys. It is the first time playing at this course, uh, first time at this event. There is one player that's kind of considered a local that we'll touch on later on in the player pool, but let's get into that player pool. All right, so on the top end, I do think there are some four phenomenal options. Obviously, starting out with Dustin Johnson, he does have that comp course history, a top 24 finish, and then a third overall finish. He's going to be a decent option. Really good staff fit. Obviously, Dustin Johnson, one of the best uh, players in the world. So we can roll with him. 
Ricky Fowler going to be a great option. Now, I do think Ricky Fowler, <laughs> I think that they chose this course. He's the sponsor guy, you know, their ad guy on the commercials. I think that they chose this course because it fits Ricky Fowler's style of play really well, and they're kind of hoping that he wins it. So, you know, Ricky's going to be a great option. I'll touch on him a little bit later on. Gary Wilden's going to be a good option as well. Obviously, um, top two in ball striking and troll driving, one of the best birdie or better or birdie or better percentage players eighth in that i do think that this is going to be a course that players can go out and get if they are playing smart and hitting the ball accurately so i wouldn't be surprised if minus 20 is you know a really good stat and so that's kind of why i'm going to be looking at birdie or better percentage as well hideki masayama gonna be a great option you know he's just made a ton of cuts in a row he's gonna be an option that i touch on later on in the video but he is a great option has three top 15 finishes at the count courses that we're looking at and he's a top 20 staff at, um, according to my model this week so we do like hideki matsuyama as an option brent snedeker is gonna be an option here that you know he won one of the comp courses but I don't. I think we're paying up a little bit too much for him. Same thing goes for Chaz Revi. We know he's just coming off of last week's victory. He is in some good recent form. But at that price point, I just can't pay up for those two, especially given the options that are a little bit lower than him. I do like Billy Horschel. Um, he does have good comp course history. T3rd, a 2nd, and 11th overall finish. You look at his secondary stats, it's kind of what separates him. 45th in strokes gain total. Uh, 71st in scrambling. Uh, top 80 in strokes gain around the green, uh, 43rd in strokes gain putting. But you just look at what he's done this year. Only one missed cut. He just kind of finds a way to make a cut, and he has been playing pretty well recently as well. Joaquin Neiman, I was kind of disappointed to see his price on DraftKings. We can't pay that, but he's going to make for a good option on Yahoo. So if you want to play him, you should probably play him on Yahoo. Bubba Watson does have good comp courses as well. He's in decent reason for him, not the best. I do think that this is going to be a course where he can shape his shots and play it how he wants to, so it's not going to be a horrible play. I'd rather go with Kevin Struman once again. I think he's going to be a great option once again. He's in good recent form. We know this. And Kevin Struman, he is you know top 25 in total driving, ball striking, and driving accuracy. He's 34th in greens regulation and strokes gain total. The only thing with Kevin Struman is he just needs to drop some putts. If he can do that, he could easily go out in top five. Um, so... I do think he's going to be around a top 25 finish, and that can be a horrible option for us this week. Going just slightly lower, I do like Rory Sabatini. Rory Sabatini is in some of the best form out of all the players on tour. I do like this price point for him. He's only missed three cuts this year. He's one of the better staff that's in the field. Uh, 32nd in strokes gained. Uh, 17th in scrambling. Uh, 20th in strokes gained approach. 85th in strokes gained putting. 64th in driving accuracy, 43rd in better or better percentage. But he has made 12 straight cuts, and he is in some really good recent form. So we do like Rory Sabatini. Now, Victor Hovland, I do like him as an option this week just because he has that driving accuracy. He's pretty good at greens and regulation. He has gained the most strokes gained in the last two weeks. So it's kind of surprising, but he's going to be, a, you know, at this price point, I do think we can roll with him, especially at a course where driving accuracy is going to matter. It's just a matter of if he can score more or not. Jason Kokrak, now with him we know it's just going to be putting. Can he drain those putts? He was missing four-footers, five-footers, nine-footers. I think he had a couple of eagles from 18 feet that he ended up three-putting. He was just horrible with the putter last week, but he was driving the ball well. Uh, his strokes gained to the green was good. So if he can get that putter rolling around, he might make for a good GPP option this week because he is a good staff fit. Brian Harmon, you know, we touched on him the last few weeks just because – it seemed like he was coming into some recent form, and he has. You know, he's been playing really well. I don't like this price point. Probably going to be a 10% GPP again, uh, play like he was last week. But still, given that recent form, I don't think we can ignore him. Charles Howell is a top 10 stat fit this week. Um, he hasn't been playing the best recent form, but like I said, top 10 stat fits, only five missed cuts. You know, he had a little bit of time off. Hopefully his game was able to get better and he was able to practice up and get back to, you know, typical Charles Howell form. Vaughn Taylor is going to be a great option for us again this week. Uh, the price point I don't love, but the recent form I do. I uh, look at his stats, uh, 46 in strokes gain, 44th in scrambling, 6th in strokes gain putting, which I really like. Uh, 27th in driving accuracy, so once again, those kind of go together a little bit. Uh, 47th in better or better percentage. The only thing is he's uh, 126th in greens and regulation. I mean, that's not horrible, but we don't love that. He has made five straight cuts, and he's just rolling in some really good form. So at that price point, 
I do wish it was lower, but, I, you know, we can play him. And our other value option from last week, Peter Molinari, uh, he does have comp course history. Uh, finished T24 at one of those courses. Uh, he's 52nd in strokes gain total, uh, 28th in scrambling. Uh, he's 20th in putting. So, I, you know, I like him as an option as well. So him and Vaughn Taylor at those price points, those are going to be good plays. Michael Thompson is going to be a GPP option. Let me find his stats here because he was kind of he was interesting to me. He had 11th at one of the comp courses. He is 34th in strokes gain total, 19th in scrambling, 74th in strokes gain around the green, 24th in strokes gain putting, 14th in driving accuracy, and he's 61st in birdie or better percentage. And we know with Michael Thompson, when he does well, he gets about like a top 15 finish. So it's a matter of him playing well. Not going to be a bad GPP option. Now, Zach here, I'm not going to play him, but I just found his story really kind of cool, so I, I want to include him in the player pool. Not in the player pool, but in the video. He was in some credit card debt, and that second overall finish that he had kind of alleviated all that stress that he had, so it was really nice to see him play well. Uh, Brian Stewart here, he is actually the local guy here. He went to college about 30 minutes away. He's kind of from that area, so I'm not sure if he has played this course or not. I'm assuming that he has because it was only 30 minutes away from his college and it's one of the best courses uh, in that area. But he actually isn't a bad stat fit, so if he went out and played ball, I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. He's fifth in scrambling, seventh in driver and accuracy. Troy Merritt, once again, going to be a great GPP option. He surprisingly has only missed three cuts, but it's what he does when he does play well that, I, you know, that we liked. We touched on this last week, but he's still going to be a good stat fit. He is 11th in par 5 scoring, 27th in uh, total driving, 15th in ball striking, 15th in strokes gain total, 28th in strokes gain around the green. The only problem with him is he's not the best putter, 111th in that. He's 30th in driving accuracy, 25th in birdie better percentage, and 21st in greens regulation. Hank Leviotto, once again, going to be a good value option for us for like the third straight week. We've been playing him a lot actually lately. Uh, I do like his stats, you know. He's just pretty good staff fit overall. You know, I, I like that price point. He's good at part five scoring, good at total driving, top 40, and all those stats. Ryan Armour, I, I don't love this play. Maybe 5% GPP ownership. Um, he's good at driving accuracy, good at putting. He does have decent comp course history as well. So I, I don't like the recent form, and I don't like to play players that don't have good recent form. Uh, Harris English, though, he is actually a player that does have recent form. We've been playing him quite a bit lately as well. He's only missed five cuts on the year. He's a good putter, uh, 11th in. He had 11th at one of the comp courses. He's T64 in par 5 scoring, 47th in total driving, uh, 17th in that strokes game putting, so we do like that. It's just a matter of not if he is going to be hitting greens, but given the price point and given his recent form, that's a risk I'm willing to take. Brian Gay. He does have good comp course history as well. T45 and a T6 at those two courses. Um, he is a really good putter, 8th in that, 15th in driving accuracy. So overall, Brian Gay, not a horrible option, but he's probably going to be my fifth most owned value play. Kind of just summing it up. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with Hank Leviota before him. Going to go with the next option I'm going to touch on before him. I do think Harris English perform. It's still not a horrible, horrible uh, play at that price point. Now, Sam Ryder is a play I was alluding to uh, just a second ago. So, T45 finished at one of the comp courses. Uh, T37 in par 5 scoring. T59 in uh, total driving. And also ball striking. Good strokes gain total. 69th in net. 47th in scrambling. Uh, 30th in strokes gain putting. 81st in driving accuracy, 32nd in birdie or better percentage, and 72nd in greens of regulation. So overall, he makes for a good option, especially at that price point. Now, I was just kind of trying to close out the build GPP-wise for you. That's kind of what I'm going to be looking at. Troy Merritt, definitely not going to be a cash option, um, but for a GPP build, I don't mind that too much. Now, let's get into the highlighted plays for this week. So is it cheating to include Ricky Fowler, <laughs> the second overall option? As one of the highlighted plays, I don't know. I just want to go over a little bit more. Like I said, you know, he is, it kind of seemed like they chose that the, this course so that Ricky Fowler could go out and play well. They want him to. He's their biggest, you know, sponsor player that they have. Um, 
and he does have good comp course history here. And I was watching one of the interviews that kind of alluded to this. You know, we wanted players that have played well on Donald Ross courses. And in my head, I'm like, okay, so that just means they wanted a course that Ricky Fowler has played well at. And you see that with the two top 10 finishes at the Donald Ross courses recently. He's great in total driving and ball striking, top 30 in those, top 20 in strokes gained, uh, strokes gained putting, and birdie or better percentage. He's good at greens and regulation and scrambling as well. So I think Ricky Fowler is just going to be a good option at this price point. Like I said, I really think that they're pulling for him to win, obviously. I mean, why wouldn't he? But, you know, if you want to play Dustin Johnson or Gary, well, then I wouldn't blame you. Those are going to be phenomenal options as well. I'll probably kind of mix in all four of these top options um, in my player pool. And the fourth one is obviously going to be Hideki Matsuyama. You look at that comp course history, pretty good. Uh, 15th, uh, T4, and 11th. He's made 23 straight cuts in a row, which is just phenomenal. He's 37th in par 5 scoring, top 20 in ball striking, total driving, strokes gained, scrambling, strokes gained around the green, better or better percentage, greens and regulation. The only worry with Hideki is his strokes gained putting and his driving accuracy, which are both around 125. But still, you know, this is a course where it will allow you to club down a little bit. You will be able to three wood off the driver on a bunch of holes where he needs to hit it accurately. So that is one of the reasons why I like Hideki as an option, especially given his recent form and his comp course history. The next play, Roy Sabatini. Uh, just I like I like his recent form. He had a T57 at one of the comp courses. Let me pull. It's more of his secondary stats I like. Um, uh, for the stat fit, but still overall he's the top 15 stat fit. Uh, let me pull out the stats here. So 51st, 51st in par 5 scoring, 32nd in strokes gain, 17th in scrambling, 20th in strokes gain around the green, 85th in strokes gain putting, 64th in driving accuracy, 43rd in birdie or better percentage, and he has made 12 straight cuts in a row, just having a phenomenal year, and I'm going to continue to ride that for him. Now, if you wanted to pivot off of him, I think you could easily just go with Kevin Struman, maybe even Victor Hovland, given his you know accuracy um, to hit the fairway. All right, let's get into the next play here. All right, so Sam Ryder, I already kind of touched on him. He's going to be a great, great play at that price point. Maybe even a cash option. He's a top 10 stat fit. He has made three straight cuts in a row. If you take out that withdrawal for an injury, he withdrew on like the first hole because of an injury. And he kind of had bad, I wouldn't say bad form, but he wasn't playing that well before that. And maybe that's because of the wrist injury. He took a couple of weeks off, came back, and has been playing well since then. Two straight make cuts since that withdrawal. And you just look at his stats. I already touched on it, but he's a really good staff hit. Pretty much top 50 in all the stats that we're looking at, which is really nice. Um, Sam Ryder at this price point, we do like. And he does have that T45 finish that won the comp courses. All right, so that's all I have for you guys. Um, please give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. But real quick, before we send it off, I do want to say thanks. Uh, we are approaching a thousand subscribers, but before we get there, I want to say thanks to all you guys who have already subscribed. I want to say thanks to all you guys who gave me information on the driver question that I posted last week. Definitely made me think about it a little bit more. I do think I've narrowed in on the driver that I'm going to be going with. Maybe I'll include it in the live video if I get it or the video next week, so stay tuned for that. But as always, let's keep cashing. That's all I have for you guys.